to Evolutionary Church, where our mission is a planetary awakening in love through a unique self-symphony. And together we declare that the last day of the old face of evolution is honored as the first day of the new face of creation. Hello, everyone. I am Lisa Witter, and I am your moderator for today of this beautiful gathering that we call Evolutionary Church. And in Evolutionary Church, we are connected. We are whole. We are expressions of the entire process of creation. We are activating a new humanity. We are awakening, as we like to say, as a new species that we call Homo Amor. And in evolutionary church, we're a church, yes, but we're also a synagogue, we're a mosque, we're a temple, we're a zendo. We are all of it. No one is excluded. Everyone is included. And we come together to attune to the evolutionary impulse that's awakening in us, as us, and through us. So welcome home, everyone. Thanks again for joining us this gorgeous morning, week 143 of Evolutionary Church. If you haven't already, please do open up your chat box and say hi. Let us know where you're joining us from. If you haven't already done that, your chat box uh, icon should be at the top of your screen. It will open up a panel on the right side of your screen. And then remember when you chat, to chat to everyone, not just to all panelists. There's a little arrow that you can click on and it'll allow you to select who to chat to. So chat to everyone <laughs> when you're chatting so that we can all see uh, where you're joining us from. Also, um, if you are a regular at Evolutionary Church or you've been coming for a little while, please do spread the love. Let your friends know about church. Uh, at the end of church, we always send out, we're starting to always send out a email that uh, you can easily forward to your friends to invite them to church because this is a grassroots movement and um, it's by word of mouth. So go ahead and uh, click on that email when you get it and forward it to any friends that you think might be interested in joining us. Uh, also, if you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do do that. Our channel is called The Church of Evolutionary Love. And when you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you will have access, uh, always have access to all of our replays immediately. Um, so that is always a good idea because sometimes our replay emails get lost in emails or in spam boxes. So if you are a subscriber to our YouTube channel, you'll always have access to all of our wonderful episodes of Evolutionary Church. So for those of you who might be new, welcome. Please do let us know if you're new so we can give you a huge virtual evolutionary hug through the, the virtual ethers here, right? Um, and just give you a little bit of an overview of what to expect today uh, in church. We always begin, begin with a Dharma recap where we recap our message or sermon from last week to bring us into this week. And then Mark uh, speaks a few opening words and then we have a reading of our code for this week and then we go into prayer and into our sermons and then we usually wrap things up right around the top of the hour. That's a general outline of what we do. David, I think, is posting our actual agenda in the um, chat box for you as well. So if you want to see a more detailed agenda, it will be there in your chat box. 
So with that, I invite us to go into our Dharma recap for today. Again, we are in week 143 of Evolutionary Church. So all false victimhoods are actually a result of hiding behind a crusade to fill up our emptiness. And they're ultimately a failure for us to feel each other, right? We shut others out and we make them objects so that we don't have to feel them, so that we can make them bad or make them wrong and then deny our shared identity. But when we commit to going the whole way in this lifetime, that was always a phrase that Barbara liked to do, we're going to go the whole way, right? So when we commit to going the whole way in this lifetime, then victimhood falls away and we don't need a false crusade to fill up that emptiness. Instead, we feel each other. We have a shared identity. We're intimate. Our shared identity actually liberates the loneliness and our needs no longer feel like an imposition. Instead, as Mark always says, your need is my allurement. Our needs become allurements. In evolutionary church, we're committed to giving up all forms of victimhood, including, as Barbara mentioned last week in her sermon, giving up a victim of being a victim of our own negative self-talk, right? We realize that when we give up our victimhood and unarmor our hearts, we become love in action. So with that, I invite us to enter into the holy and the sacred space of evolutionary church. And I turn the word over to you, Mark. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome everyone, right? right? To really feel that, right? Victimhood is an expression of pseudo eros. Now, of course, there are genuine victims in the world, right? And genuine victims we need to stand for all the way. But the way we use victimhood, the kind of hypersensitive self, as my friend Ken Wilber likes to call it, Right, who kind of focuses on some injury and then creates identity based on that injury and then stays with that injury for years afterwards, right? Because there's actually a fundamental emptiness inside. That is the pseudo eros that actually destroys us. We need to step in and be players. We're not in the stands, we're on the court of life. Here in the Church of Evolutionary Love, right? The one world church, where we are reclaiming love as religion, where we are moving towards a pragmatic politics of evolutionary love, a pragmatic politics of outrageous love, right? Here, we are experiencing literally evolution awake in us. And Barbara's going to talk, right, in our sermon today about God's pleasure, right, in the evolutionary church, right? We're, We're sitting in this place, and we set our intention in this moment. And our intention Right, our beautiful and holy intention is to actually be, right, as Lisa said in the Dharma recap, what we call love in action. Right? We set our intention to be the unique expression of the evolutionary impulse, moving in each of us individually at this moment between utopia and dystopia, to actually commit our outrageous acts of love, to engage in our deepest transformation, and to be the voice like the gospel church was in the civil rights movement like the new church always needs to be, like it was in Bethlehem, as Paul was on the road to Damascus, right, and experienced the resurrected Christ and was blinded for three days and then spend the rest of his life, right, speaking, right, the new gospel. So we are a gospel church, but we're bringing the good, the good news. And the good news is the new story, the new story, the new universe story, the new story of identity, the new story which answers the great question of who are you? And we are delighted. And we are urgent. We're urgent, not in an egoic sense. We're ecstatically urgent. We're ecstatically urgent because we know that literally right, on the brink today, I don't know if everyone knows in Madras in India this week, which is a city which is listed as 10 million, actually probably has about 40 million people in it, right? There's no water. Okay. Only water that's in Madras is being brought in on trucks. And there's enormous, enormous 
enormous suffering. We stand, and, and that's a signal of potential things to come unless we reconfigure the essential source code structures of our world. And so we are that voice. We are that voice that's actually standing at the brink, at the leading edge with radical humility and saying, this is our responsibility. It's a new lineage. And the lineages we're taking responsibility to transform ourselves and to transform literally the source code itself to be the evolution of love. So I could not be more delighted. I could not be more ecstatic, right? More honored, right? To be with every single person in this evolutionary church, 10,000 people have registered all over the world, right? Oh my God. And then we're just beginning to grow a grassroots movement. And there should be many more starting all corners of the world, people starting evolutionary churches, right? Churches of one love, right? And one heart. So, oh my God, heart open, heart ripped open, right? Our hearts ripped, we've got to rip our hearts open again and again. I'm so delighted to turn the word to you, David, right? To resonate, resonate us into reality. Take us on the inside and resonate the code. I turn the word to David. Welcome, everyone. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you, everyone. It's so good to be here to resonate this week's code. I'll state the code, I'll resonate it, and then I'll paste it in the chat box. So here's the code. Reality is driven by pleasure. The highest pleasure is the pleasure of transformation. Tra transformation equals evolution. The highest pleasure of transformation is to know that your transformation transforms everything. The highest transformation possible is to participate in the transformation of God. The highest pleasure of evolution is to know that your evolution evolves everything. And the highest evolution possible is to participate in the evolution of God. And David, thank you so much. Right, thank you so much. I received the word from you, David. And we're about to go into Amor. Amor. Homo Amor. The church of Homo Amor. The church of evolutionary love. Amor, love. When we say love, we don't mean just romantic love. We love romantic love. But, but romantic love is an expression of the core love that actually animates the cosmos itself. My lineage master, Solomon who was the great holder of goddess energy, who married a thousand wives, right? The lineage says because he was holding, right, the energy of goddess, right? And maybe each wife married a thousand Solomons, right? So this energy of goddess is the realization, the energy of she is the realization that its insides are aligned with love. It's the energy of God, goddess. It's the energy of ontology. It's the energy of divinity. It's the realization, again, its insides are aligned with love, meaning not ordinary love, Outrageous love, and right? outrageous love is the love that moves the sun and other stars. Outrageous love is not a mere human sentiment. We've exiled love to its mere human sentiment. Outrageous love is the heart of existence itself. And in evolutionary church, right, we are all about one thing, awakening as outrageous lovers, every single one of us, right, fully awake, loving our way to enlightenment. Right, loving a homo armor to homo amor, and then committing our outrageous acts of love that reality demands from us, needs from us, yearns from us as the centerpiece of our life. That's the whole church, right? Actually activating a unique self symphony all over the world of human beings awakening to our true identity as unique incarnations of intimacy and outrageous love. And then committing spontaneously, generating the spontaneous generation of the next phase of evolution, right? Awakening as evolution conscious in us as unique beloveds committing outrageous acts of love. So that's Moses' chant. Right? The chant is Amor, 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 Amor. Let's go inside. Amor, 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 Amor. Amor, 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 Amor. amor. Amor, 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 am
It's so simple, right? Just one word. Thank you, Mosa. Deepest bow to Mosa. Amor. And Amor is one word. And I, I borrowed the word, of course, from a different language. Right? And in that language, right, they have some version of this song. Right? It's an Argentinian song. Right? Amor. Just one word. Amor. Right? Amor. It's, it's just, that's the whole thing. And we're about to go into prayer. Right? And when we go into prayer, we are participating together in, thank you, Mosa, thank you, Lisa, for that, I mean, completely gorgeous Dharma recap. And notice, amor is energy. So when Lisa inflects a word, right, in the Dharma recap and puts her energy and her love into it, so the word opens our hearts. When David, right, fully alive today, just blows us away, right, with just his resonance because we can feel him, right, we can feel each other. Here's the essence of amor interiors are real the universe feels and the universe feels love evolution is and i remember when i shared this the first time with barbara right she, she must have called me and sent me i mean maybe literally 15 20 emails a day for two weeks because she she knew how to be ecstatic right evolution is the evolution of intimacy right we live in an intimate universe and god is not the not the ethnocentric right you can say the words with me we say them every week this is our dharma god's not the ethnocentric homophobic right pre-modern right responsible for so many cruelties god right who you put in a prayer and you get out a car right no that's that's not the god we're talking about the god you don't believe in doesn't exist right we participate with god god holds us god's beyond us and God lives in us, as us, and through us, and we're creating a participatory spirituality. We're held by the divine, and the divine holds us. And in the divine, at her core, at his core, at its core, right, the divine is both the infinity of power, right, the power that moves through and animates exponentially all of cosmos and hundreds of billions of galaxies and hundreds of billions of light years, right, universes and multiverses, right, beyond imagination. All of that, right, is the infinite power of divinity. And yet, divinity lives not only in third person, that infinite energetic movement of dazzling complexity beyond imagination, God lives right in second person. God holds me. God knows me. Yes, God's inside of me. That's first person, right? God lives in me as me and through me and uniquely expresses in a particular configuration of intimacy, which is God configuring as me and transfiguring me. That's God in first person. But in prayer, we turn to God in second person. We turn to God who holds us and knows our name. We turn to the God who's the mother, who God who's the father, God who's the, the beloved, the lover, God who is not merely intimacy, God, as we say in evolutionary church and the church of evolutionary love, God is the infinity of intimacy that knows my name, right? That is with me in every moment, right? We may live lives sometimes of quiet desperation as Thoreau wrote, you know, back in Walden Pond, but here's the promise. And the promise will be kept. We never live lives of lonely desperation because we're never alone. We're never, we're never alone. It never happens, right? God, goddess, she is always with us, holding us literally in our holy and our broken hallelujah. So imagine, imagine in the meditation that we do every week, 
Right? Imagine, right, let's shut our eyes for a second unless you're driving. Imagine the infinite force of cosmos, right? God in the third person moving through every law of physics and every law of mathematics, right? Which makes a supernova look like vague swat of a fly, right? A supernova is barely exists in relationship to in what it participates. The supernova participates in the supernova of the infinity of divine power, God in the third person, all of that now sitting in a chair next to you looking at you, yearning for you, wanting to receive your holy and broken hallelujah, wanting to know everything, loving you open, and holding you more infinitely tender with more alive desire than you've ever experienced in your life, exponentially squared, right? That's God in the second person. That's true, right? That's a realization. I'm blessed to hold that realization, right? You're blessed. Let's hold it together. I want to give it to you so it's your realization, right? You actually can feel it and know it. Right, in the second, that holy and broken hallelujah, everything, she's holding it all. So let's go inside, the holy and the broken hallelujah. Leonard, 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 you are with us in Evolutionary Church every week and you hold, and Fred, and thank you for email, Fred, right? Homo amor, homo amor, homo amor turns to the infinity of intimacy. And we come to the chat box and I wanna invite everybody, and everybody who's never been in the chat box before, we're about to pray. And maybe you've never prayed. And maybe you pray every day, but prayer means that I actually bring it down. I actually speak it. Prayer is always, we say, bepe. I announce it, I speak it, I say it, and I articulate my personal need. And my personal need is holy, right? Prayer affirms the dignity of personal need. So I ask first for myself and for my uncle and my friend and my brother, right? I affirm the radical, gorgeous, infinite dignity of my life, and then I move beyond my life. Right, to my friends, egocentric, right, to my, to my people, my, my community, and to the world, world-centric, and then for reality itself. So let's pray. Let's meet in the chat box, and we actually pray. Right, Tom, thank you, Tom from New Jersey, beloved Ronan, I can't wait to see you. Tom says, I pray to be immersed in the infinite erotic embrace of the goddess. Right, Shahati, right, I pray that all people have the water they need. Right, can you, can you imagine that, friends, in Madras? right? Like, oh my God, right? Let's pray. Let's blow it open and pray, right? May we quench our holy thirst. Claire, right? May I love so much and so why that nothing and no one is left out of my heart. So we have prayers from Holland, right? And prayers, right, from Paris, right? And prayers from Fred. I pray my message is received and heard. Amen, right? I pray, says Barbara, right, for the scales to fall off our hearts, eyes, ears, and souls. Medea, Holy Medea, Holy Medea, I pray for she to live ecstatically in my heart. Christine Glenn, I pray to feel and know that it's not mine, it is ours. We allow the river of life to flow freely. Christina, I pray my sister finds her way home and surrender to whatever that might look like for her. Simona, thank you, Christina from Virginia with your sister. Simona, I pray to be able to receive her love from Italy. Simona, I pray that every person is able to receive her life. Right, right. Thirst for love and water is holy. Fred, I pray my love can spring from the deepest part and reach all. Right, Mitty, right. Thank you, thank you for life. Bless the earthquake area. And I want to invite some people who are sitting. Right, can I do this? Is this okay, everybody? If you're sitting and you're actually a spectator, I want to invite just three people, right, who, who actually haven't prayed. Right, Oriana, I pray for the living water. Oriana, thank you for your transmission. And right? I pray for the living water to flow freely through the world. Most I pray for the children who are hungry, right? Who else? Who else, right? And you get that position, I'm in the chat box and I'm kind of watching, right? But if you're doing that, maybe that's what you do in your life and it's beautiful, but church actually is not, it's not my church, it's not Barbara's church, right? It's not Christina Amlon's church, it's not Lisa's church, it's our church, right? It's our church together and we pray together. Nahid, I pray for the full expression of outrageous love in every heat and in every heart, right? Andre, I pray, Andre, thank you for safe travels from my daughter right? Who else, right? Who else is kind of with us? Kirsten Zohar, I pray, right? And give praise and thanks to she for all the gifts and love I receive. And I pray to be able to spread the love even more. Tom, Tom, I pray we all wake up, right? To our dire state and our untapped potentials to evolve into homo amor. Christina Amlon, in the middle of all the tech, found time for a prayer. Thank you. I pray that my family finds its way into supporting my elderly mom with outrageous love. Medea, I pray for Ivan to move away from his past right, and live from his outrageous, great, loving, divine self. And I want just, just stay with us 
just two more people, but two more people we've never seen in the chat box. Who's willing? Jamie. Jamie, you're awesome. Jamie, thank you. Right? When you open your heart, Jamie, our hearts open. You feel that, everybody? Right? Jamie, to the God, right? To the God of the self-organizing universe, fill me with outrageous love. Right? Right? Julia, yes, Christ at the well, may it spring outrageously and all thirst be quenched. Right? Amen. Liam, I pray for strength, right? To live outrageous love in my life and for their love to flow to everyone. Right? Victoria, right? I pray for discernment, right? For when my voice is most needed. Yes, Christopher. I pray for the embodied knowing of how to command reality, right? You feel that, right? When people step, right? You step from the spectator or you move from the stands, right? And Ken, maybe just move your adjustment, not all panels to all panels and attendees so we can all feel your brother Ken, okay? Right, it's the move, right, from am I on the stands of life or am I on the field? When I'm on the field, I pray. I can access my deepest need. Oots, I pray for the good energy to keep going on my outrageous path, brother Oots, Ken. I pray all our needs are felt as an outrageous expression of love itself, right? I pray that all of us move from being in the stands to being on the court, right? From being victims to being players and knowing that it all depends on us. Okay, we're going to move into a sermon and Barbara's an awesome sermon this week and I'll sermon with you right this week. But first, let's pray in a different way, okay? Let's pray to know what love is, to know, I want to know what love is, that love is not ordinary love. It's not ordinary love. Right? We're moving from victims to players and we're expressions of outrageous love. And we are the church that's the politics of evolutionary love. We want to actually change the source code itself. I want to know what love is. Let's pray that together. Christina Amelon, take us inside and let's feel that prayer just kind of blowing us away. And let's do the words and let's sing it and let's dance it. Oh my God, I want to know what love is. I want you to show me, right? Friends, friends, beloveds, right? Here we are in week 143. And I want to talk with you today about the code. And Barbara is going to talk with us about the code. And David, there's the code. Reality is motivated by pleasure, right? We live in a world of outrageous pain. And Barbara's going to talk about the pain a little bit in her sermon today as well. And about the joy, about the pain in Madras today, right? It's one world. It's one love. It's one heart, right? Here's the sentence. Right? The single most important thing we can do in the world today, my friends, is for people to realize that your moral community is all of reality. My moral community is not my son and daughter only. My son and daughter are beautiful. My husband, my partner, right? if I'm living by myself, you know, myself and this friend and that friend, that's beautiful. That's egocentric moral community. That's beautiful. And then there's my people. That's an ethnocentric moral community. That's gorgeous. But actually, my moral community is every human being on the planet. And if people are thirsty in Madras, then I'm thirsty. And my moral community is the planet itself, and not just the planet, but reality itself. Because we're in a moment that reality is about to intertexture. We're standing before a phase shift in history, which is as great as the phase shift from single cellular to multicellular life. Right? It's exploding, but there's no source code. Right? And so we need a source code. Right? It's the most desperate need of our generation. We need to take all of the world's great traditions, in every period, pre-modern, all the great traditions, Hinduism, and we're going to have, by the way, with us next week, right, my dear, dear, beloved friend and colleague, right, Sally Kempton, right, who's really one of the great holders of the Hindu lineage, who's going to be doing a five-minute beautiful meditation, right, on the code for next week, right? So we need this code, and this code basically is bringing together all of the great pre-modern traditions, all of the great modern wisdom streams, with all of the insights of post-modernity that were important. And my friend Jordan Peterson didn't understand post-modernity, right? He, he went back to modernity, which is important. He got modernity well, but post-modernity has important things to say. We weave them all together, right? And then we together articulate literally the goddess speaking in this moment, literally the unmediated expression of the best story rooted not in dogma, but in dharma, the best integrations of all the pre-modern, modern, and post modern wisdom streams and all of their validated orienting insights. So here we go. You ready? Right? This is how we begin to know my moral community is, right? Is the whole thing, right? So the first I know is I got to know what reality is. Reality is motivated by pleasure. Okay. Right. Actually the interior of reality is pleasure, right? I call that sometimes quantum hedonism, right? Quantum hedonism and quantum hedonism means that at the molecular level, allurement holds the whole thing. So the same allurement that brought us all to church today, the same allurement that moves us to create, 
right? That moves us to look at a sunset, that moves us to, to actually everything, all of our life is guided by allurement. And I was sitting not that long ago with Werner Erhardt, right, who started the entire movement of Eston Landmark. And, and I said, and Werner said to me, if you want to give me one idea that I don't have, all right, let's like, right, that I can actually bring in and change everything, what would it be? And I said, allurement. I said, Werner, we're here talking to each other because we were allured. And Werner just got so excited. He said, oh my God. He said, I didn't have that distinction. He said, that's, he called it, it's an on the court distinction. He said, I promise you, I'm going to spend the rest of my life working with that distinction. Like, wow, right? Allurement, right? Reality is motivated by pleasure means that reality on the inside of the inside is allurement, right? Gravity, electromagnetic attraction, electromagnetic attraction are expressions of allurement. Now, what does allurement want to do? Allurement wants transformation, right? The movement of evolution is towards transformation, right? When nature, reality, the self-organizing universe, the infinity of intimacy brings separate parts together to form larger holes, right? That motivation is allurement and that larger hole is a transformation. The parts get transformed. They're deeper. They're more whole. They're more alive. They have more capacity. Right? They've recognized right, new possibility because divinity is the possibility of possibility. So reality is motivated by pleasure. There's a hedonism. There's a pleasure all the way up and all the way down, but it's to know my pleasure. Right? My pleasure is ice cream at level one, but at level two, my pleasure might be love and relationships. And at level three, my pleasure might be meaning making and standing for a noble cause. And at pleasure four, my my pleasure might be knowing my true self, enlightenment, loving my way to enlightenment. And at level five, my pleasure might be living my unique self. And at the highest level, level six, my pleasure is knowing right, that my transformation, that's level six. I just went through six levels of pleasure. You get that? Level one, all the physical senses, right? all the, the natural, beautiful senses of the world. That's level one pleasure. And it's got a counterfeit form, right? and it's got a, a, more, a sacred, authentic form. Right? Wow. Level two, love, affection, relationships. And all of level one can't get you any of level two. And level three, standing for a cause, right? Standing, right, deep, structurally, excitedly, passionately, full massive commitment, being productive for a cause. That's level three. And all of level two, love, affection, relationships can't get you any of level three. Level four, actually knowing your true nature, right? The pleasure of wisdom, of knowing, of gnosis. And all of level three can't get you any of level four. Level five, your radical, unique self-creativity, which doesn't always mean what you love doing. It's what you can do in the circle of intimacy and influence that's most needed by reality. And sometimes that meets your delight and sometimes it doesn't. But it's your unique gift at a particular moment in time. My unique self-creativity, right, as a response to divinity that needs my service. That's the fifth level of pleasure. But the sixth level, which is the subject of this code, well, I'm going to read it with you. I'm going to turn to Barbara. Right, the highest pleasure of transformation. Can you hear this, friends? This is so wild. Reality is motivated by pleasure. The highest pleasure is transformation. I mean, you get the beauty of those sentences, right? right the highest pleasure is the pleasure of transformation. And transformation and evolution are the same. They mean the same thing. Then the highest pleasure of transformation is to know that your transformation transforms everything. You get how shocking that is? Right, if I own shadow and I transform myself, if I forgive, right, if I open my heart in a way that's never been opened, if I take my part of responsibility in a contribution system, right, if I'm fearless right, and actually opening my heart when my heart feels closed, it's easy to open my heart when I'm just, you know, outraged with desire. I'm outraged with outrageous love, right? I'm full. I'm all in. That's easy. It's when my heart wants to close. And there's a thousand reasons that we move to close our hearts. There's, and there's all sorts of agendas of power and there's agendas of shame, right? And there's agendas of fear, right? And there's agendas of anger, right? There's a lot of agendas. There's lots of things that move us to close our hearts. But to be homo amor, to be outrageous love, right? Is to actually open my heart again and again and to not just love the moment open. I love the moment open by loving my heart open. To actually feel when my heart feels most like wanting to close. When I feel most like wanting to contract, I blow my heart open and I transform. That transformation that takes place on the inside of the inside of my heart, one love, one heart, that transformation transforms everything. It's like, oh my God, right? Is that beyond imagination? So Christina Amelon, get ready. I'm going to turn the word to Barbara, right? right? And Barbara, it's been such a delight to be with you in Evolutionary Church. And it's such a delight to be with you today. 
And the evolutionary church now is the place in the world in which you're, you're doing Dharma and you're giving Dharma. And it's, it's so gorgeous to be together. And I write you, I write Barbara on my WhatsApp because that's one of the places we talk to. We talk a lot. And Barbara, this was one of your favorite codes. So Barbara, I am so delighted. Right, I turn the word to you. Right, love is open. Yes. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for the pleasure of transformation that we're in together here. And as we are praying and as you are speaking, the first thing I celebrate is the new story of creation. This church, as far as I know, is the church that has accessed the nature of the new story of creation. The discovery that from the origin, from the Big Bang, all the way through for billions and billions of years, as we learn through Teilhard de Chardin, as we learn through Sri Aurobindo, as we've learned through Mark Gaffney, as we've learned through Barbara Hubbard and all the rest of us, we are an expression of a multi-billion year yearning of divine creativity for what? If I were God, what would I be yearning for? I'd be yearning, first of all, for an evolutionary church. <laughs> A church in which that my yearning for people to recognize they are expressions of God. They are co-creators with God. And they are co-creators with God at a time when the God force on this planet is jumping to a new order of complexity, of creativity, of power, of danger, of genius, of potential that has never been seen before on planet Earth. So I'm setting the scene for us not only to see the billions of years that came before us, but the exact moment we're in, it's hard to imagine a shift from single cell to multi-cell. It's hard to really imagine what evolution did to get from a multicellular creature into a coherent animal. Those jumps are awesome. And then the jump from the animal to the most intelligent pre-human, and that I've seen these pictures of Homo erectus, Homo habilis, Homo neanderthal, doing amazing things from just the animal world. And then comes in this unknown quantity called Homo sapiens. We looked pretty much the same. But what was God doing as Homo sapiens? And then Homo sapiens came into the scene of these billions of years of tremendous efforts and five mass extinctions and billions of species extinct, the pain of it has to be realized within the glory of it. Otherwise, it's too painful, so much destruction to create so much of the newness. Well, that's what happened. So now, here we are at this precise moment of recognition that reality is designed for pleasure. When we are feeling both the possibility of a devolutionary sequence on planet Earth that could lead to the loss of our life support system, with the same power of the impulse in every one of us going towards fulfillment, of our potential at a time of a quantum shift or jump or newness that has never been seen before on Earth. So we are holding this together. And when I think of the early days of Christianity, when they recognized like Jesus was new. He was like a new person. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. You will do the works that I do, and even greater works will you do in the fullness of time. Okay, Jesus, this must be exactly the fullness of time that you were speaking of. Now let's then look at our code. Reality is designed for pleasure. 
reality is the realization of potential. The whole idea of allurement and intimacy and contact it has given us the pattern that God creates more newness by joining separate parts to make a new whole, and that had to be pleasure, or we just couldn't possibly have done it. So while we're looking at the story of evolution with all the pain, we have to feel internally all the pleasure, not just our own, but the quarks with the quarks, and the atoms with atoms, and so forth, so forth, so forth. Exactly. Love at the core of the evolutionary process now becoming our allurement our realization and our contact and intimacy with source, with the process of creation, with each other, and with not only our own personal potential, but the potential of the whole system. So God put this to be so. The highest pleasure is transformation. Now, why is this? When you think of all the suffering, all the pain, all the agony of change and people getting lost and hurt and killed, and so, at the same time, transformation being pleasurable, when I am identifying with the predicament of God, if I were God wanting to be sure that humans could become godlike, that we could become creator, co-creators with the creator, I could not have done this as a robotic universe. I had to do this by us feeling the pain so that we could become aware of the impulse of creation. So we are entering into this radical period of change. So when we align with it, it animates us with pleasure. So I use this a big it, capital I, capital T, it, animating you and me with its pleasure, God's pleasure in being able to give to the human beings not only the answer to our needs and our prayers, but the answer to our yearning for greatness, for potentiality, for fulfillment of divine potential. Evolution is incarnating and embodying itself as us. And then this beautiful phrase, the highest pleasure of transformation is the knowing that your transformation transforms everything. And why would that be so? If the intention of creation is to create beings ever more able to co-create with the divine. And we are at the threshold of transforming, every, transforming everything on this planet, every much, very much as we did from single cell to multi cell to animal to human to evolutionary human to homo universalis human, able to have the powers we used to attribute to our gods. The highest pleasure of transformation is knowing that when we say yes to the potential within us, connected to the potential within others, animated by the potential of God, it's, it's ecstatic. And I want to offer here that when we source this source code of evolution, which is the impulse of creation sourcing evolution for billions of years, we're doing what is that greatest impulse of Mark's destiny, changing the source code of culture. How do we really do that? Yes, we write the books about it, but how do we write the books about it unless we are it? Unless we are source sourcing, source creating, source evolving. So I will say in conclusion here that this is the ultimate ecstasy of universal evolution that we are feeling. Ecstasy, ecstasy. 
of evolution, the joy of wholeness, the passion of God's purpose being our purpose, fulfilling all of us toward an awakening of the new human, the new humanity in a universe undoubtedly filled with other intelligences being born right now as a new species. Thank you, God. I am source sourcing itself. Mark, I turn my way to you in, the, in asking for our contribution together because our contribution to the evolutionary church is the contribution to the evolution of humanity because there's no place else I know of on earth where it's being codified and expressed and made real. I don't know of any other. It's it's awesomely precious. So I ask for contribution now. Will you put it up, Lisa, so people can click on it, please? Lisa, my dear, do you see where we click for? I'm putting it up. Just take me one second. Give me one second. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Totally love it, please. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm even the word contribution. I think it would be good for us to realize the ecstasy of creativity that realizes each of our potentials through participating with each other is our contribution to the process of creation. And our financial contribution to this is going to make it possible for this to deepen on a world scale. Amen. And I believe that this we have a mission as great as the mission of dear St. Paul on the road to Damascus when he had an experience of the resurrected Christ and he went blind for three days and then he changed the world. And my friends, let's put that link in there that Barbara asked for us. Do we have that link? There we go. Thank you, everyone. Friends, Barbara, it's so good to be with you, love. And we're, we're moving towards the end of church. So first, I'm going to just invite everyone to contribute. We're at this place where I've been resourcing one whole part of this Center for Integral Wisdom. Barbara's been resourcing particularly the church, and the promise will be kept. I promised you, Barbara, we promised each other that we're actually going to resource church. We're going to take this on ourselves, right? Barbara's resourcing, right, is now sourcing the higher realms. And we're now going to, together, we're asking everyone to at least do $12 a week, which is $50 a month. There are no salaries in church. There's no overhead. We want to up-level our technology, right? A, a beautiful, beautiful friend has created the possibility of creating this enormously important next steps. My friend, Christopher Life, and Barbara's dear friend is working with us on up-leveling the next level of church. Friends, right? Just give me a yes if you were there last week in the chat box. Who was with us last week, right, at the meeting? Right, any yeses, right? Was that an amazing? Was that amazing? Was that just like beyond imagination gorgeous? Beyond imagination gorgeous, right? We're the one world church. We're the church of evolutionary love. We're reclaiming love as religion, but we're reclaiming love evolved the evolution of love towards a pragmatic politics of love. Right? Let's, let's contribute because contribute is like so essential, right? If you can do $50 a month, right? So that it's your church. You know, someone wrote, wow, Barbara's our high priestess or Mark's our high priest. There are no high priests and high priestesses here. Right, right. I'm going to cite you a verse, a beautiful verse from one of the original great spiritual texts. You shall be for me a kingdom of priests. Right here in evolutionary church, we are a kingdom of high priests and high priestesses. Yes, there's dharma. Yes, there's transmission. Right. Yes, there's there's teaching. But ultimately, the next Buddha is a Buddha and a Sangha, right? The Sangha itself, the band of outrageous lovers itself, right? You committing your outrageous acts of love, right? Us coming together as the self-organizing universe in person, right? Enacting the next stage, the next great turning of the source code, which is the emergence of Homo Amor, in which each of us participate, right? In this unique self-symphony, and we're moving an evolutionary church towards a planetary awakening in love, 
through unique self symphonies. Let me say that again. Right? The, the stated absolute intention of church is right, a planetary awakening in love, an outrageous love, through unique self symphonies. And when we all come together and we actually live that unique self and give that unique gift, and when we look in each other's eyes, Christina Amelon, and we say, oh my God, how could anyone ever tell you that you are anything less than beautiful? Right? How could anyone ever tell you that you are less than whole? How could anyone fail to notice that here in evolutionary church, the one world church of evolutionary love, how could anyone fail to notice that our love right, is a miracle? Right? And let's say it clearly that cosmos needs that's not arrogance, it's holy audacity, right? We're going to speak the story. We're going to take responsibility. We're going to participate in the evolution of love. We're going to stand at the brink. Are we excited? We are excited. Are we evangelical in the sense of bringing the good news? We are. And are we filled sometimes with pain? Of course we are. But ultimately, we love our hearts open and we speak into the pain with activism, right? With, with radical personal love. And we literally love it open for the sake of evolving the source code. How can anyone ever tell you? Week 143, you're going to get an email right after church inviting you to send to your friends. And you're also going to get an email this week showing you how to post on Facebook, right? You're going to get a, how do you actually take church and post it in your Facebook group so people can come and people can share. This is grassroots. This is us. We're the high priests. We're the high priestesses. How can anyone ever tell you? Mad love, everyone.